Hello everybody. Let's talk about today's problem of the day where we examine another important cycle. So we've already talked about the Carnot cycle, which is a nice theoretical construct that's useful for comparing things to. Today we're going to look at the Rankine cycle, which is a lot like the Carnot cycle, but with the important distinction that we can actually use it. So not quite as efficient, but in fact real. So worth thinking about. Um, this is something that power plants run on, although usually power plants are using a modification. But we're going to start with the simple classic version. And right below me is a TS diagram that will help us talk about this. Okay, so temperature on the x-axis, entropy on the y-axis, and this dotted line is the phase envelope telling us where the steam, which is the working fluid for this particular cycle, uh, is one phase, another, or mixed. Okay, so out on the right, over here, um, the, uh, the steam is, um, I just realized that the camera might be reversed. But anyway, uh, out to the right, where entropy is high, we have vapor. Out to the left, where entropy is low, we have liquid. Uh, the reason there's a top, that's uh, where you get to supercritical. Okay, and then in the middle, there's a mix. So let's think about uh, what are the steps of our process. We're going to start with liquid water. You see that point one out on the side there. Um, and we're going to take this liquid water and we are going to vaporize it. And in the version of this pr uh, uh, process that I'm showing you, we are in fact going to superheat it. Okay, so this water is going to start um, and be heated up and then it is going to vaporize, uh, which is going to be at a constant uh, temperature, because you know as water is boiling, it remains at a constant temperature. And then uh, its temperature will rise again at the end as we superheat it. Uh, note that point two doesn't always have to be out here. Uh, if you look at Wikipedia, their version of this cycle actually has point two in the phase envelope, and I guess that's possible too. But this is, this is how, um, the most uh, efficient way of doing it is if we have some superheating. That was all at constant pressure. Now, between step two and three, we are going to reduce the temperature and reduce the temp uh, pressure by quite a lot. Um, and in so doing, we are going to uh, have initially a vertical line. Notice I drew that dotted. And note this line may or may not end up on or under or outside of the phase envelope could be anywhere, okay? But it is straight down. Now that means it was isentropic, which means it was reversible. Um, normally, we assume reversibility when we do the computations, then apply an efficiency to get the true outlet conditions and the true uh, change that goes on here. So that's what's shown with the difference between three prime, which is the reversible version, and three, which is the true exit conditions, okay? Then, between 3 and 0.4, we are going to condense all of this remaining steam or this mixture until it is exactly a saturated liquid. Okay, so this is the one point where we know our line is going to stop right on the phase envelope. So we're going to go uh, kind of into the phase envelope, then we're going to be a horizontal line as condensation happens, and then it's going to go pink and pop uh, right into the phase envelope, and it's always on the phase envelope, which makes our calculations a little bit uh, simpler here. So that's point four. And now you know to make this a cycle, we're going to have to get back up to one. How are we going to get back up to one? We've got to increase the pressure back to that initial high pressure, which will also increase the temperature. Uh, and so as we are doing that pressure and temperature increase, we again have a situation where we assume reversibility to start, which means we start with a vertical line. Uh, so that would be one prime. But in reality, we don't actually have a reversible system, so we would apply a efficiency and uh, we'd end up back at one. And that is our cycle. There you go. So you see how it kind of resembles the Carnot cycle. Remember, the Carnot cycle is a nice little rectangle. Um, this cycle, not quite a rectangle, but it, it responds better to reality, okay? So uh, the first thing I want you to work on is which unit operations are one to two, two to three, three to four, 
and four to five. What are those unit operations? They're all things you know about that you know the energy and entropy balances for. So go ahead and draw those in and write those out, and then let's solve a ranking problem. Okay, now that we know what a ranking cycle is and we know what unit operations are occurring, we can solve a typical ranking problem, okay? And so uh, let me pose this problem for you. Let's imagine we have a standard ranking cycle. And by the way, this is going to be very involved. Uh, there's gonna be many calculations for each of these unit operations as you work your way around the cycle. So usually this will take two class periods and we should be okay with that. That's why there's one video, but two class periods. Okay, so you have a ranking cycle and it is operating with steam as we expect. And the steam coming into our turbine is at a pressure of two megapascals and it is at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that is the conditions at point two, if you go look at the graph we just created. Then that steam uh, is gonna exit the unit operation that does the pressure change between, one, uh, between two and three, and it's gonna come out at point two megapascals. And believe it or not, this is all we need to actually specify, really, to be able to solve most of this problem. We're gonna have a little bit more de detail though. Uh, so, one, what are the conditions at the turbine's exit? Oh, I just revealed it. So hopefully you knew this already. Between step two and, uh, or conditions two and conditions three, the thing in the middle there, it's a turbine. Okay, that's where our work is being generated. So, if that turbine is 80% efficient, what uh, are its exit conditions? Okay, so what is the temperature and pressure of that steam? Um, what is the work that was generated? Uh, and as kind of normal with this, you should note that uh, you solve it once, assuming reversibility, and then you solve it again, applying that efficiency. Okay, what else do we want to know? We want to know QH, that's the heat coming in, QC, the heat that leaves, WS from the turbine, WS net, okay, so that's the turbine, and then subtracting off the pump, okay, because we part of the work the turbine is doing is actually powering the pump that keeps the system going. And then what is the overall efficiency of this at turning QH into WS net? And what would be the efficiency of an equivalent uh, Carnot cycle? Remember, you don't have to work everything out about the Carnot cycle. You can use the temperatures to figure out what the efficiency of an equivalent Carnot cycle would be. So you can work that out in one equation at the end. And then finally, uh, what is M dot? What is our necessary steam flow rate if we want to generate 75 megawatts from this power plant? Okay, so I really, really, really recommend, and I'm not gonna draw this out just now, but you see the note on the page. Make yourself a table. Make that same sort of table where you have one line, you know, uh, for each uh, set of conditions. So one, you know, T, P, H, S, everything you need on there. And then uh, a line for the change. And you might wanna leave yourself extra space in that line for the change because you're going to have to work it out twice. You're going to work it out reversibly for both stages where work is involved. And then you're going to apply an efficiency and work it out again, potentially. So you need to uh, leave yourself enough space to put in all those numbers and then put in set two, etc. But last thing, I recommend kind of solving these steps in order, starting from point two, that is when you have the superheated steam as described in the problem statement. Uh, if you start there, you can solve the turbine, you can solve the condenser, you can solve the pump, and uh, yep, I'm giving away all the unit operations, and then you will have what you need to know to solve the, uh, the boiler and superheater. Um, it's very difficult to just start by solving the boiler and superheater. You don't know enough yet. All right, let's get to it.